So today I'm going to be talking about USB mounting and not just manual mounting but also auto mounting and for this we're going to be talking about UDisk or more specifically UDisk 2 and the reason we're doing this as opposed to talking about mount is because all of the auto mount tools are written with UDisk or UDisk 2 in mind so that's why we're doing that. So before anyone tells me you can do this with mount I don't care we're using UDisk 2. So if you're new to the channel you know what to do and let's jump right into it. So because I did briefly mention mounting a USB device through mount, I guess I should probably show the Arch Linux wiki article on that. So the way you do that is the same way you mount any sort of device. There's nothing special with USB devices, but when it comes to USB devices, there's special sorts of things you want to handle, like for example, hot plugging, and that's why we're going to be using UDisk instead. So we're not going to keep going over that one. If you want to have a look at that one yourself, go right ahead. What we're going to be doing though is using UDisk 2. The reason we're using UDisk 2 is because development of the original UDisk has pretty much ceased. So we just moved on to that. So if you want to install this on Arch, it is very simple. It's in the standard repo. So sudo pacman-s and then UDisks. I keep saying UDisk. If I'm going to keep saying that. It's just, I'm going to slip over my words if I don't say it like that. It has an S on the end though. So UDisks. Two. I'm going to say UDisk though because it's easier. Anyway, get that installed and then that's going to be pretty much good. So now that we have that installed, we pretty much have everything set up to do manual mounting. So you don't have to explicitly start the UDisk daemon. That's going to be handled by Dbus on demand. So we don't have to do anything else there. If we want to start manual mounting now, all we have to do is plug in a device and go from there. So Let's see how we actually find what the device is called. So this doesn't mention it on here, but if we were to run, I believe the program is fdisk. So fdisk and then dash L. fdisk with dash L will actually list out all of your currently plugged in devices. So you're going to have to run that with sudo or run that in a root terminal, obviously. Okay, there we go. So this lists out all of my devices. I know I've got a ton of loop devices. When you start installing snap packages, they have a very bad habit of making just tons and tons of loop devices. But if we scroll up, we should be able to see my regular hard drive. So we've got SDB1, SDB2, SDB3, SDB4. And I've also got an SDA drive. The SDA drive is my Windows drive, which I probably should do something with because I can't actually boot into it right now. Anyway, that's not too important. So if we were to plug a USB device in now, we'll see that... So if we were to plug a USB device in now, we'll see that there'll be something else on this list. So I'll do that just now. I can't wait till I have a computer that has enough USB ports so I don't have to do that anyway. Um, let's see, we run FDisk now and as we can see, we have another device here. So now I've got this SDC device. Now make sure you keep an eye on what this device is called because if you do something like say, unmount your main drive bad things are going to happen so make sure you don't do that make sure you very much understand which device you're looking at so you'll probably be able to tell by the size of it the usb device that i have is eight gigs so and also it says on here somewhere that it's a usb no th my other one did anyway trans memory is what this one is you'll probably easily be able to tell that it's not one of your other devices just because of how much smaller it is so now that we know it's SDC1, what do we do from here? So this is actually the exact same line that's on the Arch Linux Wiki article. So if we run UDisk CTL mount dash B slash dev slash SDC1 or whatever your device is called. So if it's another number, like it might be SDB1 or it probably won't be SDA1 because SDA1 is usually your main hard drive. So it'll probably be SDB1 or SDC1 or SDD1 so on and so forth. So I'll copy that in here and if we run that now, now it'll say the device has been mounted. So where has it actually been mounted to? So we can see that it's been mounted to slash run slash media slash my user account basically slash the name of the device. So if I bring up a file manager, like for example, I bring up LF and we go into that directory. So I've got that bound to a key. So as I said before, it's slash run. So that's down where all your like root stuff is and then in the run folder it's in media and then it's in your home directory in there and then basically you can see in here that it's just got whatever the usb is called so obviously if it's got a different name it won't be toshiba it could be just whatever you call the device and this will basically just mount the device very simple so you can bring this up in a gui file manager as well so space fm will automatically bring it open if you've got a mounted device which is nice but if it doesn't automatically open, you can just go under devices and then click on wherever the device is. 
So that's pretty nice. Now how about unmounting? Unmounting is just as easy. All we have to do is instead of writing mount, we just write unmount. So we run that. And now if we go back to that directory we had before, so G U S, so slash run slash media slash the name of your user, you'll see that there's now nothing in here. So that's all you have to do for manual mounting, but you probably don't ever want to manual mount because it's just easier to do auto mounting. Now before someone gets on my case about this, I am entirely aware that USB auto mounting is technically a security risk. And if you're in a very secure environment, you probably shouldn't be doing USB auto mounting, but most people aren't in that situation and most people just want the convenience. So that's why we're gonna be doing auto mounting. So now let's move on to USB auto mounting. So this is actually an incredibly simple process. All you have to do for most of them is just download a mount helper. So we have things like bash mount, udisky, udisk svm and udevil. So I use udisky because I like the notifications and you can get a system tray and also it has password support, which some of the others don't. I don't typically use password protected devices, but if I ever do, it'll be nice to have there. The main thing I run this for though is the notifications. So all we have to do for this is basically just download it. So if we go sudo pacman-s udisky. Now make sure you obviously have udisk2 installed because this relies on udisk2. I can't say udisks. If I, if I try to say that, I feel like I'm tripping over my words. Anyway. All we have to do now is just run it basically. Now obviously when you restart your computer it's not just going to automatically run, but as we saw, it actually mounted a device. So if we unplug this now, we can see it removed it. If we plug it back in, this is a really difficult process to do. Now it should mount it again. As we can see, it's now been mounted. So we go back to where I was showing you before and now it's in there like it should be. Now I did mention that it has a system tray icon. Now I don't run this normally, but the way that you configure Udisky is just through the options you pass in. So if we run the man page for Udisky, we can see what you can actually do. So if we scroll down a bit, then we can do things like password prompts or no password prompts. You can disable the auto mounting. You might say, what's the point of disabling the auto mounting? Maybe you just want to run Udisky for the system tray icon. So if we run that with the dash A option, the dash capital A and the dash T option, so if we do that, so we go udisky, udisky dash capital A dash T. Now if I unplug the USB device and we plug it back in, it shouldn't auto mount. It didn't auto mount, it says it's been added to the list but it hasn't actually auto mounted it. So if we go into my file manager and go into that directory I showed you before, it's not actually been auto mounted. But if we click up here in the system tray and we find the device, so we see down here we have mount uh, SDC Toshiba device, click on that and if we refresh this directory, now it's been mounted. So if you just want that system tray icon, but you don't want the auto mounting, then that's how you could go about doing that. So that still lets you easily mount the devices, but removes the security risk of having the auto mounted devices. So I don't typically run it like that. I just let the auto mounting happen and I don't have the system tray icon. I don't ever feel the need to mount and unmount my devices manually. So I just let Udisky do it by default or by itself, I guess. So we check that out again. And is there anything else in here that's interesting? You have a smart system tray. There's a couple other things you can give like an app indicator and stuff. Nothing too fancy in here. If you want to have a look through the actual man page yourself, go right ahead. But most of it is just fairly basic stuff. So one thing you're going to want to do is probably make it so that Udisky will actually run when you start your computer. Now there's a ton of different ways you can do this. You can start it out as like a system D job or you could launch it in your window manager. The way that I do it is I launch it in my xinitrc file. So if we go have a look at that, so .xinitrc and I've just got a line in here that says Udisky and then run it as a background process. So that will make it so that Every time I launch my computer, Udisk is just going to run. So the only reason you'd want to run it from a terminal like this is if you're trying to test out the different options. Normally, you're not going to want to run it like this because obviously, if you close the terminal, then your USB auto mounting will disappear. But maybe you just want it to work while you actually are in your terminal. If that's what you want to do, then go right ahead and do that. But you're probably going to want it to actually run as soon as you boot your computer. So that's why I go ahead and do that. 
So one last thing I should probably mention is that if you don't want your devices mounting to slash run slash media, you can change this. You can't, I think, change this to wherever you want, but you can change it a little bit. So you can change it from mounting to slash run slash media into the slash media directory. So you do this through modifying this file in here. So the 99 udisk2 rules file, and you just chuck this line in right here. So I'll leave a link to the Arts Linux wiki down below. So if you want to check this out for yourself, then go ahead and do that. But I'm not going to bother doing that on my system. I don't particularly care where it mounts to. I'm just going to alias the CD to that directory anyway. So it doesn't really bother me. There's some stuff in here about mounting ISO devices. So I know I didn't really mention much about the other mount helpers, but it probably doesn't matter which one you run. I just run UDISKY for the notifications. But if you want to run like UDevil or Bash Mount, they're probably going to be fine. Or if you find some other mount helper somewhere else, they're probably all going to be pretty much fine. As long as it auto mounts your devices, I, I can't see any reason why it really matters besides the extra features that it might add, like for example, notifications or a system tray. So I think that's pretty much everything I want to talk about in this video. I don't think there's anything else in here too important. If you have any trouble with stuff, then there's a troubleshooting section. And yeah, I reckon that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about in this. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you notice this little silver thing in the corner, that's the uh, the shock mount for my microphone. I just realized it was poking in the video this entire time and I'm not going back and fixing it. So if you didn't notice it, hey, that's cool. But hey, if you did and you're going to leave a comment about it saying, hey, what's that silver thing? Well, that's what that is, basically. So, if you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So, go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my social links. So, my Discord, my Telegram, all of that stuff. So, if you want to chat with me or get video updates, that's where you're going to go for that. I've also got my support links down below, so if you want to support the channel, I've got my Patreon and all of those other links down below, so feel free to go there and donate to the channel, but obviously if you don't feel like it, then you obviously don't have to, but any help will be really appreciated. And lastly, I've got my alternate video platforms, which, which at this stage is BitTube and Library, so if you want to check those out and watch my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, that's where you can go for that. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.